you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. A couple things before we get into who the guest is in tonight's episode. First off, thanks to everyone who's taken the time out of their Friday night for choosing ASTV Productions and watching this week's edition of the Prospect Show, as well as a special thanks to everyone that took the time to watch last week's edition of the show with Connor Bedard. We're currently sitting at a thousand views on our Facebook for that episode, which is absolutely incredible. It's just a surreal feeling to see that number. And we're also sitting at over 200 views on our YouTube as well for that episode. So I can't thank you all enough for the support you've given us on that episode it's just like i said a surreal feeling and i can't be any more thankful for the support that you guys gave us on that episode but yeah let's get into who the guest is in tonight's edition of the show it's number 53 of the saskatoon blazers he's committed there for the 2021 2022 season he's a 2006 born forward from saskatoon saskatchewan it's tyler phipps tyler joins the show tonight to talk about the commitment to the Blazers for the 2021-2022 season. We also dive into the past two seasons. He's had a chance to play with the Saskatoon Generals back in 2019-2020 as well as this season in 2020-2021 for the Saskatoon Bandits where he wore in A as well. And we also dive into some other stuff on tonight's edition of the show. And just some clarification on Tyler's number. He's actually wearing number 22 for Saskatoon coming into next season. I said that he's wearing number 53. That's wrong. He is wearing number 22. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming in number 22 of the Saskatoon Blazers for the 2021-2022 season, Tyler Phipps, here on The Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. Joining me now is Tyler Phipps, number 53 of the Saskatoon Blazers, committed there for the 2021-2022 season. He's from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. He joins us now on the Prospect Show. Tyler, how's it going, man? I, uh, I'm going to be honest, I almost slept in and uh, or I had a nap and almost slept through and missed this interview, so I'm happy to be here. Hopefully, you're happy to be here as well. How are you doing yeah. on this uh thursday night since we're doing this pre-recorded the night before this episode goes out yeah pretty good how about you going good going good i'm uh, i'm feeling fresh after that nap feeling rejuvenated yeah. and uh yeah, yeah right, ready to do this interview so yeah how have things been going for you uh you know during the uh ever since school's been out uh it's the summer months now i'm sure that you're, you're gonna have a lot of great stuff planned for yourself this summer just uh, how summer been going for you so far yeah it's been pretty good i've been on the ice a couple times every week working out some online classes and we get to go to the lake a little bit go camping Nice. Always great to get out to the lake, man. I know that I have a uh, family cabin at Falcon Lake in Manitoba. It's always so nice to get out 
be out by the water. And yeah, it's great that you've been able to, to be on the ice uh, a couple times in a week. Um, you know, just what, what have been the things that you've been working on the most lately since you've been on the ice? Uh, it's been lots of skills because it's always practice, practice, practice. You're not allowed to play games until like a week ago. Been trying yeah. to work on my legs, get a more powerful, explosive stride. Nice. Is that something that you feel is going to be one of the things that you're looking to improve on the most heading into next season? Is that just working on that stride? Uh, yeah, it'll be that and learning to play at the pace of midgets. It's definitely a lot faster than Bantam. You have to think a bit faster. Yeah, for sure. And uh, for you, it's only going to come with experience, right? When you get that experience next year of playing with U18s, it's going to be a great opportunity for you to, to continue working on your skills. Just how how excited are you to have that chance to go up against players that are, are going to be older than you next year, just getting to experience playing at that AAA U18 level? Yeah, it's going to be super exciting. It's something that people look forward to for years and years, and it's exciting to finally be here. Why did you choose Saskatoon, the Blazers, as that next place for your development in hockey? Uh, well, like since Pee Wee, they've been having me out to practice camps. They've been paying a lot of attention to me. They have a really good de developmental uh, organization. And I just felt like that was the place to be. Yeah, and they got some great talent coming in to next season. Of course, Tyson Buchkowski, uh, Raiden Zacharias, Riley Ash, uh, the list goes on and on, right? It's going to be a fun team to watch next year, especially with you joining the team as well. Uh, I had a chance to speak with Cole Shepard. Uh, you know, he gave me your dad's contact info for me to set up this interview with you. Said that you're going to be a, a high-end pick in the WHL draft coming up in December. Just uh, how excited does that make you feel that uh, a guy like Cole Shepard, a uh, guy that, uh, you know, was a huge part of getting you to, to come to Saskatoon probably in the recruitment process of him just being able to, to say that about you, just how excited does that make you feel? Yeah, it's super exciting. He's seen lots of high-end players play, lots of high-end picks, and it's a really good compliment to get from him. How excited are you to get that opportunity come December to, you know, hopefully get your name called at some point in the WHL draft? Yeah, it'll be super exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Have you um, had a chance to uh, find any representation in terms of an agent that's going to be representing you, or is that something that's still in the works for you? Uh, yes, I do. Scott Bonner and Jerry Johansson from TSC in Edmonton. Awesome. How, how's that experience been like with them, just the relationship that you've been able to build up with those two? Yeah, it's been really good i'm actually going out to their camp next week in vancouver nice uh are, are you gonna be doing a lot of camps this summer leading up to the season or is it just gonna be that camp that you're gonna be doing just a couple of that one and like a blazers one nice and uh you know just speaking about that talent that you're gonna be able to play with next season with saskatoon uh as a rookie just how excited are you knowing that you're, you're gonna be surrounded by all that great talent with the Blazers come next season. Yeah, that's going to be super exciting. I've spent most of the years playing against them. And it'll be fun to finally play with all of them. Yeah, that, that'll be great, you know, uh, to, to not be, I guess, enemies on the ice, uh, not not being rivals as much, but more, more so being teammates, right, which will yeah. be awesome for you um just in terms of the saskatoon blazers uh the type of player that they're going to be getting from you of course you led the saskatoon generals in points in the regular season in 2019 2020 you had 33 goals 27 assists in that regular season obviously you can put that puck in the net and you can dish the puck too but what what type of player is this team going to get not only on the offensive side of things but on uh the the overall package from tyler phipps um i like to play my game with speed and i play a 200 foot game and i force turnovers in the defensive zone and create a lot of offense through it 
How have you found that throughout these past few seasons playing in the Saskatchewan Double A Hockey League in that fifteen U fifteen age group? Just with the Generals and the Bandits this year it has really helped with your development in terms of where you're at now with your game. Yeah, it definitely has. I had great coaching staff both of those years, and they pushed me to be better every practice and game. Yeah, and uh, can you just speak about the coaches that you've had a chance to be able to play for? Uh, with the Generals, I was with Scott Owens and Mike Mann. They were both really great. They've been coaching the team for multiple years, and they're both really great coaches. In my second year, I had Jeff Salmasso and Charles Fox. They're super, mm. super good, very high intensity, high pace, and they're always pushing you to be faster and better and quicker on the spot. Nice, nice. And uh, what what did you find? Was, did you find that the philosophy from just the two different coaching staffs was different, or did you find it was kind of like the, the same thing, just kind of the, the same game that these coaches put out as a game plan for you guys? Yeah. Uh, some stuff is the same. Some was a little different. Different systems, mostly. Yeah. What What would you say were probably the biggest differences? Because you, you talked about how, you know, both were similar in terms of just the intensity out there. But what, what did you find were the, the differences in just the way the Saskatoon Generals played in the season that you were playing for them in 2019-2020 in your rookie season in the league compared to what the Bandits you know, wanted to play like this year? I found that the Generals, they were a very defensive team, and all their offense came from creating turnovers and getting odd man rushes and playing with speed there. I found the Bandits was a lot more moving the puck and getting open to the right spot, just playing really fast. Yeah, and uh, evident just how this Generals team was that defensive team first, right, with those 71 goals against in that um, 2019-2020 season. Of course, this year with the the Bandits, you guys score uh, 21 goals in total, 15 against. But just speak about how, you know, that time with the Generals last season really helped you improve your all around 200 foot game with just focusing on the defensive side of things, as well as you being so uh, dynamic on the offensive side. Uh, Yeah, those teams definitely both really helped me. They, they definitely taught me how to be a better player and play a full 200 foot game all the time. Yeah. And uh, you know, for you in, in the defensive zone with the Generals last season, just what what did you find were probably, or I guess, yeah, last season, what, what did you find were probably your, your biggest strengths in the D zone? Uh, my best strengths were probably definitely like being fast to attack someone, getting them to like fumble the puck or get it just to slip out and being able to get a hold of it and get down the ice. Definitely creating turnovers. Yeah, and uh, are you are you a centerman or do you play wing, Tyler? Uh, I prefer to play left wing. Left wing. So yeah. as a uh, as a winger, it just uh, you know how how were the wingers relied upon in in the defensive zone with the generals, just with the system that they played, just uh, the, the types of. Uh, the types of roles you were put in as a, I guess, as a player when uh, when you guys were, were in the defensive zone. Yeah, they, the weak side winger was always supposed to take away the middle shot to make sure that shot never got to the net from up high in the middle. That's probably one of the more dangerous spots there. And to never give the defenseman a straight lane to the net. Right, just just taking away those lanes, right, making difficult on making it difficult on on the opposition to to really get that offense going by taking away those lanes. Um, you know, just for for you playing on that left side as that's what you prefer. Why why exactly would you say you prefer that that left wing over maybe uh, playing right wing or center? Uh, when I play left wing, like when we come out of the zone, I can come across the ice on my forehand and get pucks and then it's easier to catch passes and go down the ice 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, obviously playing on your stronger side as a uh, your left-handed shot as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, just playing on uh, playing on your strong side as a winger, definitely uh, playing to your strengths, as you said, just being able to do those things. But just uh, talking about the situations that you were able to be put out and with the generals in that 2019-2020 season in terms of power play PK, did you have a chance to play both on both special teams on both side of things, or was it only power play PK or did you, what, what were, uh, what were your, your roles in terms of that? I got to do most of it more. So uh, just like five on five and power play, but I did play some penalty kill. Nice, nice. And uh, just on the power play with you, you know, having that uh, type of offensive talent that you have of just the the speed, uh, your quickness, obviously a great shot too. just how would you say you were uh, where you're most effective at on the power play out there in the zone? Do you like to play on the half wall down low? Do you like to be that guy that sets up uh, in the high slot for shots on the PP? Just uh, what what? do you feel like you're you're most comfortable with on the pp and plane so I, like if we're in the that umbrella i like to be on the left side so i can step down and shoot off the wall right yeah and uh definitely makes it easier for you to catch passes yeah. that way as well and uh have a yeah. quick release let's uh talk about that shot that you have uh, obviously scoring 33 goals in 30 games is huge uh putting up over a uh, goal per game just uh what what would you say was probably the biggest strength in your shot in that season with the generals um, yeah i'd say my biggest strength was probably the ability to get my the puck off my stick super fast so the goalies don't have as much time to pay attention to it yeah for sure and uh was that has the shot always been that good or has it been something that you've been working your way up and and improving on i know that there there's always room to improve right but how was the how was the shot like last year in your opinion just the the level it was at i think it was still pretty strong but i'm always trying to improve it because the goalies get better as you keep going so you got to strengthen your shot even if it's good yeah, no doubt about that, especially heading into your season next year with the Blazers. You're going to be playing against older goalies, bigger goalies, so that that's definitely going to be something for for you that uh, you obviously want to work on. But is there a, um, a special training spot that you have either in your backyard? Maybe you go to a field to, to work on your shot. Is there their setup that you have? Uh, I do have a spot in my backyard. We can put an put a net up and then like mesh behind it and i have like one of those little fake ice like the sliding boards that i can shoot off of right kind of like a shooting pad right yeah nice um has that been something that you've always had the opportunity to have access to or is that something that you've uh you know along the way kind of set up in your backyard with that training space um, I've had that in the summer for a couple of years. Usually in the winter, we have a backyard rink, so I can use that. I got to ask you this question. Uh, I've never asked this question before here on the show. I know that with sticks, there there's so many different preferences for players, right? Some players like a heavier stick. Some players like a, a shorter stick. A, some players like a longer stick. Players like uh, some players like a, a lighter stick as well, like it nice and light in the hands. What what type of stick do you like to play with out there in terms of those things? Um, I use a fly light. I like the stick super light and quick to release the shot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, uh, I think that that's the way to go, right? Just with the technology that's out there today yeah. with sticks, if you're able to have uh, as light of a stick as possible, uh, why not have it? Because it makes it, in my opinion, from experience of playing with uh, just hockey sticks in my lifetime while playing hockey, just uh, I, I always like to have a lighter stick too, because I always like to be... Uh, you know, have those quick hands and, uh, you know, try to have a quick release as well. Could you speak about just uh, your hands and just the, the strengths you have with those? Um, 
I'd say my hands are pretty good. Definitely able to like use them effectively to move the defenders' sticks out of positions to make plays. Right on, right on. Well, we're we're gonna continue talking about your strengths, uh, just as a hockey player on the offensive side of things, and as well as some other stuff coming up on this edition of the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I've been joined by Tyler Phipps, commit of the Saskatoon Blazers for the 2021-2022 season here on this edition of the Prospect Show. Stick with me and Tyler. We'll be back with you in just a second, or in in just a moment, after these commercial breaks. Let's just put it that way. We'll be back after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. I've been joined by number 53 of the Saskatoon Blazers, a commit that is going to be playing there for the 2021-2022 season. 06 forward from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Tyler Phipps joining us on the show this week. Well, joining me on the show this week, of course. And, you know, we've just been talking a bit about just the commitment early on to Saskatoon. We've been uh mostly talking about just his year with the generals last year and you know before uh before we started up again here on the show uh i did notice uh that tyler has a chicago blackhawks logo on his wall right now uh he's got like the the stripes of like what what would be on the jersey yeah. the so big chicago blackhawks fan pretty nice room i will say you got the colors and everything which is awesome and you you told me that you've been a, a hawks fan ever since you've been young big taves guy just uh why why exactly chicago is that favorite team for you in the nhl i don't really remember why they were my favorite but i just i like jonathan taves and just seem to be the team i stuck with yeah, and hopefully we get to see Taves back in action next season after missing the year this year uh, with his, his medical issues. Definitely something you don't like to see, but hopefully he can be back to 100%. Is uh, Jonathan Taves uh, a player that, you know, obviously is your favorite, but would you say he's a player that you try to model your game after? Um, a little bit. Definitely his 200-foot game is definitely yeah. something that I would try to copy or, like, model yeah for sure his uh 200 foot game is uh when he's been at his best has been one of the best in the league right uh just uh, what he's been able to do with the three stanley cups as well during the uh 2010s with the chicago blackhawks uh is there a favorite jonathan taves memory for you that from when you've watched him play you can uh look back at and say that that's my uh favorite memory of him no, not really. No, no. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of good memories. Is there uh, one memory? Is there um, some memories of watching him in particular you look back at and, uh, you know, think about and get excited about? I know that there's not one in particular, but is there uh, is there a few? Yeah, I definitely see him lifting those cups. It was exciting. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, definitely exciting. Obviously, for me, being from Winnipeg, just being able to to see Jonathan Taves do what he's been able to do has been uh, phenomenal. Captain Serious, for sure. Uh, yeah, no yeah. doubt about it, that's his nickname. But, uh, yeah, um, I, I was telling you earlier, uh, before we started up, that, you know, Dakota Community Center here in Winnipeg, they, they named the arena after him, I think, after they won the first Stanley Cup they did. So uh, I, I guess, like, would that be uh, on your bucket list if you came to Winnipeg, Manitoba, to uh, if you ever come here again to, um, you know, check out that arena? Yeah, it definitely would be. I didn't know about it before. Might have to check it out next time I'm in Winnipeg. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, maybe if the Winnipeg guys draft you, you'll have a lot of opportunities to come out. Or maybe if you're in Winnipeg for a game, 
uh sometime you can come check it out but yeah it's awesome man they got his yeah. jersey from team canada as well as his uh chicago blackhawks jersey as well and uh just just some great pictures of him it's uh it's pretty neat stuff i, I think you'd enjoy it but um just uh uh, move, moving back uh, into just your season with the Generals last year, moving away from Jonathan Taves now, it's just, you know, being able to to be on a team like that, that was third in the North at a record of 22 wins, seven losses, and two ties, just why why would you say that this team was able to have so much success in that 2019-2020 season of being that strong defensive team as well as that uh, team that can put the puck in the net as well. Yeah, I'd say we were, we definitely played very fast and we didn't let shots come from good spots to the net, which made it really easy on our goalies. Yeah. Um, was this a experienced team last season in terms of the guys that you had on the team in terms of age, or was it a uh, a younger base team? Well, we were about half and half that season, I think. Yeah. How, how is that like just having that experience of playing with some younger guys uh, as well as playing with the older guys as well? Yeah, there's definitely a lot you can learn from the older guys. They definitely teach you a lot even if it's not through words just playing against them constantly in practice yeah was there a player on the team that was a mentor for you you would say one player in particular or would you say that you, you kind of looked up to, to all the older players on the team um there were a couple Reed Andreessen and Caden Price are both pretty good role models on that team that year yeah, and of course, uh, Reed went uh, in the first round of his WHL draft in 2020. So definitely, you got to play with a uh, highly skilled player. I'm uh, I'm not sure about did did Caden get drafted as well? Yeah, I think 31st. Oh, that's pretty solid. So you had a chance to play with uh, two high end players that are uh, looking to probably make some noise in the, in the WHL coming up into yeah. next season. But uh, just in terms for you, just getting used to the uh, U15 double a game last season, just how, how was it like for you at the start of the year, just getting used to the game and just working your way up throughout the year? Um, was a little bit different at the start. I'd never really played contact before, so it just seemed faster and, the hits came very fast and you had to think way faster and play faster. Yeah. And uh, definitely a good experience for you, right? Just getting that experience of playing against, uh, you know, the, the higher level competition. And uh, you had a chance to, to play three games the year before with the Saskatoon outlaws. You also played in a playoff game with them uh, in 2018, yeah. 2019. What was that experience like of just being able to, to get your, feet wet in the uh, the Saskatchewan AA Hockey League got that U15 age group uh, a year early a bit. Yeah, that was, it was definitely exciting. It was, it was a little bit shocking how much faster it was in that first game. A lot faster than I expected it to be. Yeah. Uh, would you say that those experiences of being able to play in those three regular season games, as well as that playoff game, served you well into transitioning into the league in your 2019-2020 uh, season? Yeah, I think it did a little bit. Cause you, cause even after those couple of games, you knew what you were like looking for and when people would come to hit you. Speaking about that, there's uh, it seems like every time I ask um, the 06s on the show or just people that have had a chance to play, uh, you know, uh, playing with contact, just talking about the the get basically like just talking about that that first moment that they realized that like body contact is for real just getting lit up uh and then you know they they learn from it after just being able to keep their head on a swivel and stuff like that did you have one of those moments in your first season with the team with the generals or did that moment come for you with the uh saskatoon outlaws uh, that mostly came with the outlaws in those three games but then it took like two games through the generals to figure it out 
yeah uh, after that you say that you you learn pretty quickly that you gotta keep that head on a swivel and keep that head up and stay aware yeah 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 for sure for sure uh just uh talking about um more more about your season in 2019-2020 with the generals just um you as a player you know we've talked about the shot we've talked about just your game in the defensive zone your 200 foot game um just you you on the power play as well the different situations that you were able to play and let's talk about that hockey iq that you have because not only did you put up 33 goals in those 30 games you put up 27 assists as well just speak about your on ice awareness with that iq your playmaking ability as well and how that really showed out and showed up and showed out in that uh 2019-2020 season yeah i think that's one of also one of my strengths is being able to think the game and figure out where people will be and being able to hit them in the right spot. Yeah. And you ended up having five assists and four games played in the playoffs as well. So your, your playmaking ability came out as well in the playoffs in those four games, you had two goals as well for uh, seven points, just, um, you know, over the years, how have you felt that your hockey IQ has been able to develop? Yeah, I feel like it has been developing as the speed of play gets faster and faster. Yeah, and would you say that that also comes from you watching maybe a lot of NHL hockey as well, just being able to to watch as much hockey and really take some of the skills that those NHL guys are, are putting out there and using them for your game as well? Yeah, sometimes you do something in a game and then you don't notice it and then you watch it in an NHL game and the player does the same thing and you're like, why didn't you do that? Sometimes you just don't see it and you can learn from it. Have you had a chance to have some film on yourself and look back at it and kind of realize some of the things that you could have done better, the things that you've done well as well? I have seen a little bit of film, but not really. Yeah. What what's that experience like though of just seeing yourself play from a uh, you know w- with you not actually being on the ice just sitting back and watching yourself play. Uh, yeah, sometimes you notice some stuff that you could have done way better and it just doesn't look good, but sometimes you have those good moments and it's you like you like what you did in that situation. Let's uh, talk about you as a uh, a person just um, on the ice and in the dressing room. How I would you say your personality is like out there as a as a hockey player? Um, I say definitely I'm a bit more serious and I'm super focused when I'm out playing games. Like I do like to talk and have fun, but usually I'm serious when it's time to go. Yeah, that's great. Just uh, got to be got to be serious, right? Uh, of course, you, you want to have fun as well, but got to got to treat the game uh, with with that seriousness, right? And it seems like you've been able to, to do that throughout the, the seasons of just playing um, just uh, with the generals last season, you put up 60 points and 30 games played. You put up seven points and four playoff games played. Just uh, what was that like? First off, uh, just going back to that first playoff game you ever played in the league with the Saskatoon Outlaws of just the environment, the intensity, just everything that came with the playoffs. Yeah, it was definitely way more intense and louder in all the in the building while you played. It just felt more pressure when you're playing. How, how did you feel like you were able to handle that pressure in your first ever? playoff game as a I guess you were what 13 years old back then when you were playing yeah it would have been yeah how how was how was just that that experience like of just being able to handle that pressure and stuff like that Uh, it was pretty good I think I handled it well you just don't listen to anyone yelling in the stands 
Right. Yeah, there, there's some crazy parents out there for sure in hockey. Uh, some of them which uh, do take it too far sometimes pretty, pretty serious. It's like, come on, this is they're just kids out there. You know, they're, they're just uh, this isn't the, the Stanley Cup playoffs. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Some of the things that I've seen in the past with parents in playoff games. But yeah, just uh Heading into that 2019-2020 season, just uh, for you to make that Generals team, just what what were the things that you were working on the most leading up to that season and the offseason of just the, the work you put in? Uh, I was definitely trying to get a bit bigger so I wasn't so easy to toss around when it got to contact. And I was also trying to get faster so that I, so I was less of a, like you couldn't get hit as easy if you're always moving and you're fast. How would you say that your your speed game was like in 2019-2020 of just going up against older players that season? Obviously something that you you were working on heading into the season. How, how did you feel that you fared in that aspect of things? Uh, I, I think it was pretty good. It was, it's still, my speed is probably my biggest strength out of all of them. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, just you'd say that your speed is the, the driving force of what your game is and then everything else, like your, your playmaking ability, your shot, everything like that kind of falls into place after. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, um, you know, just for, for you, uh, you're at 5'9", 155 pounds right now. Is that something that you're going to continue working on is just getting into the gym and, and putting on more muscle, more strength? Yeah, definitely. I, would, I still do want to be a bit bigger than I am now. Yeah, and that, that'll come with time, right? Just put in yeah. the work in the gym and then good things will happen for you and you'll you'll continue to put on uh muscle for sure can you speak about just uh your eating habits just the the way you eat before games and just the the way you found that uh yeah that just the the way you you eat before games and just uh in a in a given season uh I, yeah i'd say before a game usually i'll have like chicken chicken fettuccine alfredo like three or four hours before a game and up to that point i'll just have like fruits or some yeah like fruit nice you got that fruit in there you got that uh protein in there as well which is great um do you do you find yourself eating differently in a season compared to in an off season uh yeah a little bit yeah, in what ways would you say it's different? Um, usually, like in the off season, I don't like I don't eat in a specific amount of time before my ice time or my workout. Right, right. How uh, how important have you found that nutrition is in just the aspect of, of training and just uh, getting into the gym, just keeping up a diet like that to to keep up that muscle, keep up that strength. Yeah, it definitely helps, like eating the right foods after you're done working out and eating the right stuff so that you can work out. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're going to um, talk more about your 2019-2020 season coming up. We'll talk about the 2020-2021 season. We'll dive into more of the commitment that you made to Saskatoon coming up after the break. Also talking about that uh, Evan Thomas Memorial Tournament you had in 2018, Tyler. I've been joined by Tyler Phipps, number 53 of the Saskatoon Blazers, uh, commit for the 2021-2022 season on this edition of the Prospect Show. Stick with me and Tyler. We'll be back again after this commercial break. Stick with us. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue.
Warrior Jungle. Welcome back to the Prospect Show on ASTV. I've been joined by Tyler Phipps, number 53 commit of the Saskatoon Blazers for the 2021-2022 season. Just been talking to him early on about the commitment a bit, been talking about his season with the Generals, talked about that first time he got experience playing in the uh, Saskatchewan AA Hockey League at the U15 age group in 2018-19. Uh, with the Saskatoon Outlaws. We're going to continue talking about his season in 2019-2020 with the Generals. We're going to dive into a season this year with the Bandits, as well as just some other things too, and then we'll uh, we'll end off this show and uh, we'll go to a final commercial break. But yeah, just uh, talking about that 2019-2020 season, just how, how would you say that you develop throughout the season in terms of just your offensive game and your defensive game as well? Uh, yeah, I'd say I developed really well. I was definitely able to, like, definitely able to play with more speed as the season went on. Yeah. And uh, just having that experience of getting that confidence to play in those different situations that you played and how, how huge was that for your development to just get that confidence from your coaches just to, to put you out in those situations? Yeah, that was really good for it. You need confidence to play and definitely having big roles will give you confidence. Talking about the playoffs, uh, you had a chance to play in one playoff game the season before with the Outlaws. You had a chance to play in four playoff games in the uh, season last year with the Generals. Just getting that full experience of playing in a, a playoff series. Just You talked about the intensity uh, the, the year before with just the, the crowd and the fans and stuff. Just how, how would you say you were able to go out and, and handle that in, in the uh, second time around of you playing in the playoffs with the Generals last year? Uh, it was definitely a lot better, and it's just you just treat it like any other game. You're just out there to win, and you do whatever you can to win. Can you describe truly what that intensity is like out on the ice of just how things get more chippy, more physical, just how you were able to handle that intensity of the competition on the ice last year? Yeah, I think I handled it pretty well. There's definitely guys trying to finish their checks, trying to wear you down throughout the games you play. Yeah. Would you say you're obviously like you're you're 5'9", 155, not the biggest guy, but not the smallest guy out there, right? Would you say that you're the type of guy to to throw a lot of checks or are you a guy that relies more on his his skill game out there to get things done? Uh, I do rely a lot on my skill game, and I don't usually play a lot of the checking game. Usually I'll just use it to take someone off the puck against against the wall. Yeah. Did you find that that kind of changed for you in the playoffs, like you were throwing more hits when playoff time came? Uh, it did change a little bit. I threw a couple more hits, but it, it didn't change that much. After uh, looking back at the season that you had with the Generals, after uh, the season finished, obviously not being able to finish it off due to uh, – COVID-19 canceling the season, just looking back at the season you had, what were the things that you felt you needed to work on to continue developing and uh, getting better and better heading into your 2020-2021 season this season? Um, I think I would have to work on more finding the open man and moving the puck quicker and definitely evading checks from the other team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, obviously just working on that, those little things, right, of getting better. Obviously, yeah, the, the things down like the, the speed, the skill on the offensive side of things, the uh, defensive side of things as well. But just uh, being able to put up seven points in four games played in the playoffs last season, knowing that that production was uh, still there for you in the playoffs just uh how how huge was that knowing that you were able to, to step up in those big moments come playoff time yeah that was super exciting it felt really good 
Yeah. And uh, in, in which ways would you say that your, your game is kind of fit to, to play in the playoffs? Um, I'd say it's, I'd say it's definitely fit for the playoffs because the intensity goes up and the play gets faster, but a bit chippier. So I'd say I excel as the game gets faster. Moving into this 2020-2021 season that you had, you led the team in points with uh, 13 points and four games played, seven goals, six assists. You wore an A as well. What was that like being able to be named a leader with a letter on the team this year? Yeah, it definitely means a lot. It's When I was in my first year, I looked up to the guys with the letters, and it was super important to me, so I knew how important it would be to them. Playing with the uh, Bandits this season, uh, this team was third in the North at three wins and one OT loss, 21 goals for 15 goals against, just obviously not being able to have a full season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But in terms of the games that you were able to play in, what, what were the things that you noticed that really stood out about this team this year? Um, we were definitely a very skilled team, and I think I think that team could have done a lot. We were super good. We definitely played very fast, and we definitely had a lot of production and, and depth in all of our lines. Yeah, and uh, just for you, just coming out and having a season like you did, leading the team in points at 13 points in four games played, just how, how would you say that your game – Showed an improvements this season compared to your season with the Generals uh, in 2019-2020? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, you do have an edge on the younger guys that haven't played in the league yet. You, you know how fast the play is, and you, and you can play up to that speed, but they don't quite know it yet. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just getting that experience of continuing to develop your skills was, was definitely huge this year for the, the time you were able to play. And did you, did you feel like you were uh, playing in uh, in more, uh, I guess, high-pressured situations than last year this year with just you being a, a second-year player at this age group, or would you say it was kind of the same as with the Generals? Uh, I'd say I played a bit more of a, like a higher role this year definitely a lot more ice just speak about just uh the landmates you were able to play with this year and how you guys were able to, to generate offense were you playing i guess were you playing on um uh, the same line throughout the four games or would you say that the lines changed a bit um i played with one line for like two games and for the other two it kind of switched because we had a hurt player so it was changed around pretty frequently. It wasn't the same the whole time. Did you have a chance to play with some familiar faces this season, or was it a season where you were you were playing with a lot of new faces? Uh, this season I was actually playing with pretty much all new faces. I hadn't been on a team with most of them. How is that experience like of just getting to uh, build new friendships, build, build new relationships with these boys. Yeah, it's definitely exciting when you find more kids that you have chemistry with, and sometimes you just find a kid that you just click with, and you play really good together. In terms of the talent that this team had, obviously with you guys finishing third, uh, it could have been a promising season for you guys. Did, did you feel like this team – had a chance to obviously like you're going to be a bit biased right and then say that the, this was a team that could uh could have been good but truly just uh how how far do you think that this team could have made it in the playoffs if you guys had a chance to play in a full season yeah this was a super special team they were they were all really good and i think we had a chance to win win the province yeah, too bad that it, it wasn't able to happen and you guys weren't able to, to play a full season. But that that's the way it goes right on to bigger and better yeah, things yeah. coming up this year with the Blazers for you, of course. But uh, talking about how the, the shot, the speed, just the overall game of yours took a, another step this year. Just uh, what, what would you say was probably the, the strongest part of your game this year? Would you say the, the speed was probably the strongest part of your game once again? 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, in terms of you as a skater out there, obviously you got the speed, but can you talk about just the um, edge work that you have out there, just the ability for you to evade defenders in tight spaces in the offensive zone, uh, just your, your ability to, you know, have that uh, stamina as well that you have out there uh, being on the ice for uh, long amounts of times. I'm assuming just speak about just the, the different strengths of your game in terms of your skating besides the speed. Uh, yeah, I'd say I'm like super good on my edges and I'm able to move the defenders out of position to create better opportunities, whether I shoot it or pass it. What what's that like for you going up against defensemen of just reading their uh, disadvantages and taking advantage with uh, just maybe with your speed, but as well as using your edges and your your hands as well. You definitely like you got to get you got to watch defenders and you and you got to see where they're moving. You got to try and get around them how would you say for you that uh body language plays a huge part in the way you play of just you know uh just being able to fake out defenders with maybe you're you're looking one way and then you turn the other way just talk about how that uh that body language i guess uh the the way your body is positioned has served you well throughout the years um, yeah, it's definitely helped being able to fake one way because I've heard that lots of defenders like to watch the chest. So if you can, so if you can get it to go, like if you can fake them the one way and go the other way, it's, you're going to get them most times. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, just the, the best in the game do it right. Like guys like Mick David, um, you know, Nikita Kucherov, um, Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon. Austin Matthews, uh, and Panarin, the, the list goes on and on, right? Patty Kane, uh, just guys like Barzell as well, who's a, a great, you know, uh, possession player and is a, is a monster with the puck with his edges as well. Just uh, de- definitely the, the things that they do is huge. And I think body language has a huge uh, part in why they're able to be so successful at that level. And I think it's going to serve you well as well. But uh, just talking about just uh, your shot, we, we talked about it early on in the show. Where were you say you're, you're most effective on the ice with that shot, the, the places that you like to, to shoot the most from? I definitely like to shoot from like kind of the top, top of the circles and like hit the corners on goalies. Yeah. Mm. Right, right. Just uh, looking for those goals, right? Not as much as the rebounds. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, right on, right on. Um, just uh, talking about the big tournament you had back when, uh, you know, you, you were young and, uh, you know, you still are young, but even even younger back then in 2018, playing in the Evan Thomas Memorial Tournament, uh, you put up 17 points and you had a Hattie in the finals uh you know just to, to be able to have that type of performance in the in a tournament like that how, how huge was that for you just so early on knowing that you could have that type of impact in a tournament like that yeah it was definitely super exciting and it gave you a lot of confidence it definitely gave the team a lot of confidence too, having success early on in the season which uh which team was that that you were playing on that year the kodiaks kodiaks yeah, you guys ended up winning the tournament, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, to to be able to, to have that type of impact and for your team to, to have that type of success, definitely a huge, huge uh, step for you guys that season into having that type of success. But just uh, what, what was it like being able to play against all the different teams you guys played against in that tournament, just the competition you faced? Uh, it was it was pretty good competition, and I felt like I played good throughout the whole tournament. Right on, right on. Well, we're we're going to uh, move away from that. Just finish off with some of the uh, stuff to do with your commitment. Just uh, 
you know, for uh, for you coming in, obviously, like you're uh, you got some praise from Cole Shepard already coming in. Seems like this team is excited to have you. Just uh, what is what have the conversations been like between you and the coaching staff up until this point in terms of just talking about the potential roles you're going to play and all all the other stuff as well. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been exciting. I've, uh, yeah, it's exciting to get to play for a coaching staff like that. They're all very experienced, been coaching for multiple years, and it's exciting to play for them. Just this is a huge part of your uh, hockey life up until this point, right? You know, the WHL draft coming up in December. Just uh, what what are going to be the things that you're going to be focusing on the most to potentially boost that draft stock going into your uh, WHL draft come December? Yeah, if, if I'd want to raise my draft stock, I think I'd have to – uh, I'd have to improve my stamina, and I'd have to definitely think the game faster and play faster. Yeah, and th- those are things that are just going to come with time, right? And just the work you're putting in this off season is definitely going to be a huge part in terms of you just getting to those uh, that that type of level and the things like that in that way, right? For sure. Uh, just um, talking about the excitement of knowing that you're going to be potentially getting drafted into the WHL. Just, uh, you know, it's going to be a dream come true for you. Just, you know, whatever team calls your name, just how, how excited are you going to be when that that uh, time comes when you do get your name called? Yeah, that's going to be super exciting. Like when you're young, you go watch all these WHL games and you think it's so cool and it's just awesome. And now that you're finally here and you have the chance to be there, it's just, it's amazing. What are the goals for you heading into this season with Saskatoon in terms of the things that you want to accomplish with this team on the ice? Uh, I definitely want to just, I want to develop and improve all my skills, but I also want to like bring some production to the team and score goals. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what you're able to do. Uh, obviously, I'm assuming that that championship is also on your mind as well. Yep. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, Tyler, it was awesome talking to you tonight. Um, you know, it's 1132 here in Winnipeg, so I'm going to uh, let you go now. Uh, right. Get this episode right. edited down and, uh, yeah, let you go. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks for coming on tonight, man. It was a lot of fun getting to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. This was Tyler Phipps, number 53 of the Saskatoon Blazers commit of the for the 2021-2022 season from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, going to be exciting to see him do some big things next season when the time comes for him to step on the ice. And it's going to be exciting to see where he goes in the WHL draft as well. So we're going to take another commercial break in this edition of the Prospect Show. I'll be back without Tyler to give you guys some final words on tonight's edition of the Prospect Show. Stick with me. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Prospect Show on ASTV Productions. Tyler Phipps, number 22 for the Saskatoon Blazers, joined me on tonight's edition of the Prospect Show. I want to thank Tyler for coming on and being the guest in tonight's episode. I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in tonight, as well as our sponsors who sponsored tonight's edition of the Prospect Show as well. I'll be back on the network next week on Friday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for an all-new edition of the Prospect Show here on ASTV Productions on Facebook. Facebook is one of the places where you can watch it as well as on our website at astvproductions.com. But until next Friday, folks, until I see you then, I've been your host of The Prospect Show, Graham Forsyth, signing off now. 
Enjoy the rest of your Friday night, everyone. Stay safe out there and have a wonderful weekend as well. Peace out, everyone. Thank you.